Now one thing you should keep in mind when it comes to the equal sign, when you're simplifying things, you can have terms where there's only numbers involved, right? So you could have 2 plus 5. So 2 plus 5 is 7, we already know that, and that's simplifying. When it comes to the equal sign, you're going to have to have at least one variable, and a variable is usually a symbol or a letter. Usually we use letters for variables. You're going to have a variable in there where you're trying to solve for something. So there, there has to be an unknown, or initially anyway for us, there's going to be an unknown in our equations. In our, when we start doing this, thing. so we're going to have, you know, 2x is equal to 5. So there's going to be a letter in the symbol, okay? Keep this in mind. first operations that we learned when we started the language of mathematics was how to add and subtract. So let's see how addition and subtraction work together with the equal sign, okay? Let's start off with basics. Let's go x plus 5 is equal to 2. Now, what you do when you have addition and an equal sign, and this is, what this is, is it two terms on the left side and one term on the right side, okay? Whenever you have addition and subtraction, that's your separation of terms, okay? Unless they're all divided by something. But we're, we're, we'll get into that detail. Let's just talk about this for now, how we, how we solve for x. And when we're solving for something, what it means is we're getting the letter on one side of the equation by itself. So whenever they say solve for something, what you have to do is get, get that letter by itself on one side of the equation. And the letter we refer to as a variable, okay? The way the equal sign works is, if you want to get rid of something on one side of the equation, you have to do the opposite to it from that side. And because this is an equal sign, you have to have balance things out. If you do something on one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side of the equation. So what we do here is, this is x plus 5 is equal to 2. What we want to do is get x by itself. So we have to get rid of the 5. What we're going to do is, that's plus 5, we're going to subtract 5. So we're going to go minus 5 on this side. And because we have an equal sign, and the equal sign means we have to balance things out, whatever we do on one side, we've got to do to the other side. So if we subtract 5 from this side, we have to subtract 5 from the other side, minus 5. So this guy kills this guy, right? All we got left on this side is just an x. So x equals 2. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. And that's your answer. x is equal to negative 3. One tip that you should keep, you know, use, uh, or one way to lay all this stuff out is, Math is very visual. So what I like doing, personally it helps me out a lot, is I line up my equal sign whenever I'm solving for things. You know, try to get some kind of balance happening. And what happens is, usually if you have a large equation, if you're balancing your equal sign down the middle, your equation gets smaller and smaller, and you end up with a, you know, triangle, backwards triangle, or upside down triangle, or a cone, or something like that. So it looks quite nice, okay? It looks pretty cool. If you do it, you know, hopefully it works out that way. Sometimes you introduce new things and the equation, it blows up, it becomes crazy. But in general, just the simple stuff, you start off with, you know, certain term on one side, certain term on the other side, your equal sign in the middle, line up your equal sign, and start crunching things around, and what you notice, you end up with a V. Let's go deal with the minus sign. The minus sign works the same way. So I'm going to make the next question a little bit more complicated than this one. Let's look at the minus sign, right? For the minus sign, let's add a couple more, uh, well, the same variable in there, because when you're solving for something in general, you only have one variable, one, one type of letter in the equation initially. Later on, we're going to deal with a lot more variables, and that's really getting into functions. Okay. That's a uh, precursor to functions, and we'll deal with some of that stuff later on. Okay. Now, I added a plus sign and a minus sign. What we do with these types of problems, we have an x on one side of the equation and an x on the other side of the equation, right? 
what we have to do when we're solving, when they say solve for this kind of thing, we have to get all the letters to one side and the numbers to the other side. And initially, there's only going to be one letter, one variable. So what you have to do is get the variable to one side and everything else to the other side. So let's start moving things around. Again, if you want to get rid of plus 5 over here, you move it to the other side. But what you should always do is simplify before you start moving things around. If you can simplify one side of the equation and simplify another side of the equation, then do that because that reduces the number of steps you have to do. Okay? So let's simplify this for now. x plus 5 minus 3. We can't combine these because they're not you know, the same term, but we can definitely add these. The sign, as we said before in the first series, I think, the sign in front of the number always goes with the number, right? So that's a positive 5 minus 3. That gives you 2. So this side, you know, you can cross this out. It becomes plus 2, right? So now you've got x plus 2 is equal to 2x minus 1. What we want to do is bring the 2x over, take the 2 over there, right? Now, instead of doing, you know, subtracting 2 on this side and subtracting 2x on this side, what I like doing is circling them and moving them. Like, visually, it just makes sense to me. For, for some reason, it just makes sense to me. And whenever I do that, what it tells me to do is change the sign of the number. So, what I do is grab this guy and say, this guy has to come over here. And that's plus 2, so that becomes minus 2. And this guy, I have to grab and bring it over here. Because we would normally just go minus 2x. What I'm going to do is just go, comes over. And this tells me as soon as I jump over an equal sign, it changes the sign. This was positive 2x, becomes negative 2x. Now this may look complicated, just messy. But when you start doing these things, when you start, uh, the more you do, the simpler it becomes, basically. Okay, and you can deal with huge problems. Hopefully, we'll later on we'll go to a gigantic wall and I'll make a huge problem. We'll go through it and you know draw all these things. But let's start. Let's continue with this thing. Okay, what you got here is negative two x, and that's a positive x. So negative two x plus x is negative x. Line up your equal sign. Negative x is equal to that's negative one minus 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So you got negative x is equal to negative 3. There's two ways to continue this because you're not just looking to get you know negative x to one side. You need to get x to one side. The variable has to be completely isolated. No negative numbers, no square root symbols. That's what that's what it means when they say solve for something. It means the letter, the variable, has to be completely isolated on one side and everything else on the other side. Okay? Now over here, we haven't isolated yet. This is negative x is equal to negative 3. Right now, we're just dealing with addition and subtraction, moving things around. Later on, when we do division, all you have to do is divide one side of the equation by negative 1 and divide the other side of the equation by negative 1 and the negative signs disappear. Or multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. What we're going to do right now, because we're just dealing with addition and subtraction, we're just going to move them, move this guy to the other side. So let's do this with a different color pen so it shows. So we're going to grab this guy, bring it over, and grab this guy, bring it over. The equal sign stays exactly where it is. Right? Negative 3 comes over the equal sign. Its sign changes, so this becomes... Negative x moves over the equal sign, but sign changes. So that guy becomes x. So x is equal to 3. Okay. Let's go, let's take a look at the multiplication and division and see how we deal with those things. And you should be familiar with this if you, ha if you aren't already. And if you're just getting into this stuff, keep in mind, if you do the equal sign means if you do want something on one side of the equation, you have to do it to, uh, to the other side of the equation. And if you want to move something from one side, or if you want to get rid of something on one side, you have to do the opposite to it. And if you're going to do it on one side, you have to do the opposite to the other side. Okay? Let's go do um, division multiplication.